All right, cohort B. Um, listen, uh, about that exam that uh, that I need you to write online today, it should only take a couple hours. Okay, so um, I'm gonna send you a login and then you can get started. Um, April Fools. <laughs> I know it wasn't very convincing. I thought, well, you know what, it's kind of hard now that you're online. But uh, it's too bad you're missing the party that we're having today in class for cohort A. My uh, definitely my favorite cohort now for sure. I mean, I just feel like we're on the same page. You know, we're just on the same team and everything. That's just a good feeling. There's so many benefits of being on the same team. You know, instead of being like adversaries. Anyway, uh, listen, we've got a few things to discuss. It's going to be short uh, thing here today. I just have a couple of things for you to work on. So uh, yesterday we were doing the ray tracing activity. Okay, so like uh, you did, uh, if you didn't finish this, okay, I gave you the handout. Okay, uh, if you didn't finish the uh, gizmo, just go online, okay, log in with whatever login you like there. And all you have to do is complete up to this yellow line. Okay, so I think I only printed that much for you on paper. So if you could just do that much, that'd be great. And in case you hadn't noticed, it works out an awful lot like how it worked out for mirrors. In fact, it works out exactly the same way, okay? Now, just uh, turning the page, okay? Let's talk about these notes. So I wanna do these notes for you. Uh, let's go ahead and do it. All right. Okay, so images and lenses. Now, some of these blanks are a little hard to fill in, so let me fill it in for you. You should have this handout. I gave it to you on paper on on, uh, on Wednesday, okay? So uh, here, the deal is that light is reflected, at, or sorry, refracted at the glass, sorry, let me write, write it the way I think they expect it, the air to glass surface. So in other words, just as the light passes, from air into glass, that's when it bends, right? Now, light travels through the um, glass of the lens after that, okay? And then light is reflected again, refracted again, pardon me, refracted at the glass to air surface. So here, okay, you can see the actual path. It bends here and here. That's what they're trying to get you to understand. But normally we draw them like this, okay? And in fact, I would like you to draw it like this the shortcut method. This is how, okay, like you do this. Okay, when you're drawing it, you would draw it like that. Please don't try to draw it like this. That's a nightmare. Now, unfortunately in this handout, they, uh, which I found, it's, it's for the grade 10 textbook, they show it drawn like that, but you're gonna draw it using the shortcut method. That's how we always do it. Now, a converging lens is thickest in the center, okay? It causes incident parallel rays uh, to, um, <laughs> I think they mean pass here, okay, through a single point after refraction. The principal focus of a converging lens is on the opposite side of the lens as the incident ray. And so look, here's why we call them converging lenses. Now the shape is convex because it's fat in the middle, right? but we call it a converging lens because it converges the light onto the principal focus. So that point is called the principal focus, okay? That's it, so there's page one. All right, page two. Um, here, I don't know why there's three blanks. I would just write the optical center, okay? Is the center, and ignore this one is the center of the lens. The line through the optical center that is perpendicular to the dashed line of the lens is the principal axis. You know this already. We've been working with the principal axis since we started working on mirrors. Light rays parallel to the principal axis converge through a single point on the principal axis called the principal focus, okay? Or the principal focal point is maybe what they were looking for there. Anyway, um, 2F is on the same side as the principal focus. So here, this is F, this is 2F. 
Remember how we did, uh, this is also f and 2f on that side. Okay, but uh, this on this side over here is the principal, where the principal focus is. Because like that's where the light's gonna go from our object. Okay, all right, so what are the rules? Now we went over the rules already, so I'm just gonna tell you what the rules are here. The rules were covered in the gizmo. So rule number one, okay, a ray parallel to the principal axis goes through the principal focus. So that's very similar to how it works with um, mirrors. So we get that one. Now, rule number two, a ray through the secondary focus. So here, I'm gonna, why don't I color these in a little differently? I'm gonna make them red. This F and two F, these are the secondary on this side. And over here on this side, is the primary okay all right so anyway a ray through the secondary focus goes parallel to the principal axis and finally a ray through the optical center just keeps going straight through that's pretty straightforward those are the rules now let's use these through three rules and map out where the image is here so that's f this is 2f this is on this side the secondary focus on that side Okay, and here's my object, right? So rule number one, now it's a pain for me to do this. You know that on the uh, OneNote software. <clears throat> I'll do the best I can. So let me go here. Let's see if I can ink to a shape. All right, so a ray, yeah, it's gonna be difficult with me. This is rule number one. I'll try fiddling with my keyboard, seeing if I can work. I'm not gonna to spend too much time fussing with this because I, I know you get it. Um, all right, there's my mouse. Sorry, it took so long. Actually, that's not bad right there. All right, so that ray will go through the focal point. So let me see if I have better luck with the mouse. Let me try this. No, well, that's not bad. I almost had it perfect, didn't I? Wow, that's actually really good, okay. Okay, not bad. That's rule number one, okay? Now rule number two is basically the same as rule number one. The only difference is it's kind of opposite. So we start here. I always start all your rays at the same spot, okay? Rule number two, a ray through, and I gotta stop it right like there, okay? So remember, we use our dotted line through the optical center along the optical axis there. Now that ray is going to refract, shape, straight line. That ray is going to refract, see if I can get this just perfect. Not bad, actually parallel to the principal axis. Now that is rule number two. Actually, let me let me fix that. Let me put it underneath, that is rule number two. Okay, so rule number one, rule number two, they're kind of opposites of each other. Let me see if I can colorize these lines a little like we did in the app. What if I made that, can I change the color of this? Yeah, all right, rule number one. Rule number two is in red. Okay, rule number one in black. All right, rule number three. Rule number three is the easiest one to draw. Okay, and it's a ray that passes through the center, keeps going straight. Now I'm gonna change the color of this later. If I've done my job right, my all three rays should meet at the same spot, and they do here. I'm gonna make that one green. So that, is rule three. Actually, I might as well make my writing red for rule two. Okay, so one, two, and three. Very straightforward, those are the three rules. And here we can see, I'll do a rainbow color for my image. My image is forming right here. And so there's my little image there in the rainbow color. And that's it, and we can see this image is Okay, it's smaller. 
so that's size. It's inverted, that's the attitude, right? Um, location is between F and 2F, okay? So it's, be, it's like behind the mirror, or behind the lens, okay? Between F and 2F, and it's also uh, real. It's real because the light actually goes there. We could actually see an image of that object in a screen if it was placed at that exact spot. And that's it. So these rules, slightly different from how it works in a mirror, but similar though. So if you're having a hard time remembering the mirror ones, really if you could remember the mirror ones, it does help because the rules are quite similar. All right, now, um, it says here, I want you to use the gizmo for this. Okay, so answer these questions by using the gizmo. Now, let me show you what I mean. So I'm actually gonna go here. I'm gonna go to the um, Explore Learning. I'm just gonna log in myself. All right, so let me check this out. Let's load the ray tracing lenses. Sorry, I should have this loaded ahead of time, but you know, it's fun. It's not fun to watch, okay? All right, so if you look at your notes, it says, what are the characteristics of the image produced when the object is between F and the lens? So we're not gonna look at figure four, we're gonna use the gizmo. So I'm gonna move F back a little. I'm gonna make F like 15 here. Now I'm gonna move my object between F and the lens. So I'll make it a little shorter so you can this will work okay so here now my object is between f and the lens and it says back on my page what are the characteristics produced by converging lens when the object is between f and the lens and we can see by looking at it i'm going to let you write it down in the notes but i'm just going to say it here's the image over here okay and the image is clearly um, virtual okay because it's on the same side as the lens as the object it's upright, okay? And its uh, location is past F, you know? Past the secondary focus. So that's what you would fill in in that blank. Just state the characteristics of the image. Now name six applications of lenses. It says page 517, but just off the top of my head, telescopes, binoculars, glasses, um, cameras. Um, I think that was probably five. Uh, what else would we use a lens? Microscopes, I don't think I mentioned that one yet. Um, well, I'm, it's, it's late, I'm tired, so it's, I'm not, okay, my mind is drawing a blank, but anyway. Uh, when would you use a lens? You might use it in, you know, fiber optics, okay? The applications were getting a little obscure now. Um, yeah, that's good enough anyway. I think I named six. Okay, draw the array diagrams. So I will let you do these ray diagrams. So please complete those three ray diagrams. It is possible that you get no image, okay? And you can always check your answer by setting one up, pardon me, on um, the app, on this app. You can set it up and see for yourself what they look like. But you should kind of remember, like commit to memory, because that'll be on the next quiz. All right then, moving right along. Okay, so what else did I give you uh, today? I gave you a worksheet for a lab. We'll skip that for now. Next time I see you, we'll do the lab. It's kind of fun, playing with fire. And then here I have a uh, more practice questions. I'm not sure I gave this to you today. If I did, go ahead and do it. If I did not, then print it and do it. You need to print this and use the rules. Okay, and locate the image using the rules that were discussed already. So here's some several examples for you. That's it. Now, I did include a diverging lens. And I just wanna say that the rules for the diverging lens are very similar to the rules for the convex mirror. Okay, so let me show you on the gizmo how the diverging lens works. So a concave lens, which is a diverging lens, always has the same characteristics 
no matter where I put my object, the image is real, or sorry, it's virtual, it's upright, it's smaller every single time. Okay, so that's the case for a concave lens. It's very much like a convex mirror that always produces smaller virtual and upright images. Okay, so that's it for that. Moving right along. Okay, so give that a try, by the way. Now, you can draw the ray diagram, but you can also check these answers, okay, with um, the thin lens equation. Okay, you're supposed to do like sort of scale diagrams for these last two, but anyway. Okay. Now, the let me add a little page here. And I'm gonna zoom in, because it's way zoomed out. Okay, that's good enough. And just let me tell you what the thin lens equation is. And guess what? You've seen it already, okay? So the thin lens equation, it's no coincidence that it looks exactly like the mirror equation. One over di plus one over do equals one over f, okay? And then the magnification is hi ho equals negative dido. That's the same as well. Also, okay, if the lens is convex, this is something sort of opposite of the mirrors, but if the lens is convex, um, you have a positive focal length. If it's concave, it's a negative focal length. Otherwise, everything works out exactly the same, so you can use the equation for both. And that's it, for both concave and convex lenses, that's what I mean. So that's the thin lens equation. Now, like, look, it's the same as the mirror equation, it really is, okay? So that's it. Now, I included a short worksheet for you. If I can find it, there it is. So there is a short worksheet, it's only a few questions. Give it a shot, like look at the top, the equations are listed for you. All you have to do is plug the numbers in, see if you can answer these questions. There's just a few questions, it ends there, but that's your homework, okay? And then next week we'll have a quiz on all this. Yay, okay. So anyway, guys, that is your work for Thursday. Enjoy your Easter, okay? Enjoy Easter. Um, you know, it's been a long stretch to get this far in the school year. Uh, normally we'd have a break already by now, the March break, but anyway, so I hope you, I hope, I, I mean, I'm gonna see you before Easter, but, uh, or not before Easter, I'm gonna see you next week. But uh, take some time to relax, and then all you have is a couple of days of school next week, and then you can uh, take a break. And hopefully we won't shut everything down. That's, I know there's talk in Gatineau, they're shutting the schools down for 10 days after Thursday. And that would mean that uh, our last week would be online if they did that here. If that's the case, we will do an online test. I'm just giving you a heads up. Okay, and I'll set that up for you, and I will give you instructions. And both cohorts would do it the same day. All right, then. Um, have a good night. Have a great Easter. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know, and I will talk to you on the other side of Easter weekend, okay? So next Tuesday. So enjoy, and um, don't forget to get me a birthday present for my birthday tomorrow, April 1st. Okay, and I expect something good. Okay, that's an April Fool's joke. Okay, my birthday on April 1st. But you'd be surprised at how many people like fall for that though. Okay, so anyway, I'm kind of disappointed you guys didn't get me anything on my actual birthday. So uh, yeah, no points there for you. All right, uh, anyway, I'm gonna end with this funky looking screen here. So have a, uh, a good weekend, we'll talk to you soon.